What's up you guys, it's been Sanity and welcome to another episode of Professional Development for Dancers. If you guys haven't yet, make sure you guys subscribe for more quality content about dancing. Today we're gonna to be discussing the very, very important topic of how much should I charge for performance. Now this is a very deep subject that can get very, very complicated. So I'm gonna walk you guys through the process to give you guys a general understanding on how to do this. Now before we get started, I have one simple question to ask you guys. Are you ready to be a professional dancer? Are your skills polished? Are you able to get out there, entertain a crowd, do this while not falling every single time? This is a very important question because if you're not ready, you should probably go back and polish up your skills, get back to practice. Now with that said, we're gonna get started and I'm actually gonna walk us through this process with a scenario. Let's just say some random guy asks us to do a performance. I want you to dance for my birthday for free. You gotta then ask yourself a couple of questions. Number one, how does this benefit me? Most of the time, they're gonna say, it's gonna be great exposure. A lot of times they're gonna say, oh, it's good exposure, it's good exposure, it's good exposure. But how much is exposure really worth? It's very common for people to try to take advantage of dancers, and a lot of times they don't even realize it. They think that, oh, we're dancers, we're just this happy people that wanna dance and it's so much fun. Oh my gosh, I'm giving you an opportunity to dance and have fun. Wow, I'm so thoughtful. But most of the time, it's really not that thoughtful. People love to offer these exposure opportunities to dancers and it, a lot of times it doesn't make any sense. It makes sense to them, but for us it's like, would you as a professional plumber go around and you know, unplug people's toilets for the love of unplugging toilets, right? Or would you as a professional accountant go do people's taxes for the love of doing taxes, right? Most people don't do that. So although yes, we love to dance, we do this for the love, there also is a line between doing it for the love and people taking advantage of you. And that's what we wanna avoid. We don't wanna let people take advantage of you. So the second question that you need to ask is, is somebody getting paid? Because if somebody's getting paid, you need to get paid, right? If the person organizing this event is making money from this event, you also need to make money too. Right? So with the exception of maybe your grandfather's birthday party or maybe you know an event that's for your family, you know that's understandable. Otherwise, if you feel like your skills are at a professional level that you should be getting paid for, then you know what? You should be getting paid for it. Know your worth. This leads me to my first point of how to price your performance, all right? And I'm actually gonna start on the very, very low end of the spectrum and allow you guys to use this as a model to build upon as you get better, as you get more exposure, as you market yourself, as more people wanna book you, okay? So let's just say this random guy wants to book us for a show. It's something very, very simple. It's just a couple of dancers. We're gonna go freestyle, right? Not much preparation involved. There's five guys, me and my crew members, five of us total, all right? We wanna think about how much should each of us get paid to make it worth our time. All right, let's just say we just have to be there for an hour. Something real quick, we're gonna do a freestyle, we're gonna go two rounds each, it's gonna last five to 10 minutes. So let's just say for that one hour performance, each of us dancers should get paid 50 bucks each. It's really not that much for us, but it does make it worth our time, right? So $50 each dancer for five dancers is $250. The second thing we need to consider is our travel time and also just traveling expenses. So let's just say for each dancer we have a $10 travel expense, right? Which equals $50 total travel expense that you're gonna give to these people. This will cover gas and any other travel expenses we might have. So $300 total for this five to 10 minute performance. The reason why you need to understand how to break this down is because not everybody understands the value of your work. You put so many hours into your craft to be able to put get out there for you know, a couple minutes to exert amount of energy, creativity, and experience for the crowd. You know, even though it's only five to 10 minutes, you're creating a very exciting experience. A lot of times people just see that number, $300. Wow, that's expensive. I can't pay $300 for a five minute performance. That's ridiculous. But if you break it down to them, saying, well, each dancer is only getting 50 bucks, it's really not that much. So this is generally how we could start pricing our performance. And then as we grow and get better, we could expand. So next, I wanna give you guys another scenario. Let's just say me and my group have put together a performance that we've packaged, we've, it's very solid, it's still five to 10 minutes, but it's a polished routine that we could actually sell to different places and perform in different locations. And let's say, uh, 
a college basketball team contacts us to perform for halftime, all right? Now, we can now charge more than $300. We have this package, you know, show. And also, we're probably gonna have to rehearse about two hours, you know, sometime before this performance so that we could get ready and make sure that everything's together. Maybe one guy can't make it, someone has to fill in, we gotta teach them. Um, there's a little bit more effort that has to be put forward. All right, so now we could charge a little bit more. Let's just say we charge 100 a dancer, right? So each dancer is gonna get 100 bucks. We're still charging that $50 travel fee. And now, for five dancers, we're gonna charge 550. Now again, this is still on the smaller spectrum of things. You know, as you get better, as you market yourself, as you um, gain popularity, you could charge more and more and more. But I want you guys to understand this from the ground level working up. So now, again, Asking someone to pay 550 for a performance for a lot of people is gonna sound outrageous, especially when you say it's a 10 minute performance. You're gonna like, that's crazy, 550 for a 10 minute performance? You're trying to rip me off, right? But when you break it down to them, each dancer is only getting 100 bucks, right? You know, it's chump change, right? You're not gonna pay your rent with 100 bucks, but this is something that people need to understand. So understanding how to break this stuff down really helps you guys develop a better relationship with your clients. Because you can't just approach people with this big head that, oh, you have to pay me if you don't, blah, blah, blah. Like I mentioned in the beginning, a lot of people understand dancers as these people that just love to do these performances and they love to do it for free. We have to be the change. We have to make them understand that we are putting a lot of work forward. We are not janitors going to do janitor work for the love of janitorial work, right? Dancers also need to get paid too. So lastly, the reason why I'm making this video, the very, very important reason why I'm making this is it's important for us to add value to ourselves as dancers. As much as we value our dance, ourselves, our creativity, we have to make sure that other people do too. If we just keep giving our services for free or for, you know, for pennies, then we will always get pennies. And it happens so often, more often than it should, that this dance group is trying to charge X amount of money while this dance group is, you know, doing the same service for, you know, 20 bucks or 50 bucks, 100 bucks. And it just brings down the market for these type of dancers. You know, if I'm, me and my group are trying to do a performance and we're going to charge $300 while little b-boy windmill over there is doing his performance with his friends for 20 bucks The client slowly starts to think why should I pay these guys $300 and I can pay these guys You know, maybe a hundred bucks and make them happy It slowly erodes away the value that people have for b-boys and b-girls And if you guys can imagine every city doesn't have a, a bunch of breaking groups out trying to do performances so if you are out there you know, charging super, super low amount, you're not only hurting yourself, but you're also hurting other people's business. So once again, make sure you guys value yourself as dancers, because if you don't value yourself, nobody else will. I hope this helps you guys understand how to price a performance and give you guys a better understanding of how to also communicate this to your future clients. If you guys haven't yet, make sure you guys subscribe, add this to your favorites, and leave me a comment about maybe a question you have about professional dancing or just dancing in general, all right? I'll talk to you guys soon. Peace.